Sadie Benning was born on April 11, 1973 in Milwaukee. Their career began at the age of 15 after they received a PXL 2000 toy video camera for Christmas by their father, James Benning, who was an experimental filmmaker. Expecting a camcorder instead, Benning was quite upset with the camera as it was just a toy to them. Regardless, they started to use it to create what we now know as vlog-style videos of their adolescence. This led them to becoming the pioneer of a new and popular style of film called Pixel Vision. Their artwork showcased visuals for queer youth as they were an underrepresented group at the time. The videos were described as dreamlike and fragmented, and were filmed within the borders of their bedroom. It was an escape from the cruel world, almost. It gave Sadie the chance to speak, but not get a response. And that was what they liked about the camera. They gradually started getting more creative with their work and would later feature some of their tactile artwork, drawings, and paintings that included paper, dolls, masks, and clip art actors in their films. It's safe to say that Benning set the bar for future Pixel Vision artists. I think it's important to take some time to provide a bit of context to Benning's work while exposing a few themes and tools within their arsenal, so I'm just going to dedicate a little bit of time to go over that right now. Benning's early work, so Me and Ruby Fruit and If Every Girl Had a Diary, for example, reads like an artful video diary, composing dreamlike fragmented narratives exposing the artist's subconscious and questioning their gender and sexual identity. Benning is both performer and director of their video diaries, turning them ca the camera on themselves to create imagery unique to their lived experience. Themes of gender, sexuality, performativity, and solitude are shot through dreamy, fragmented narratives, fluctuating sharp and soft focus, slow motion, which is cut through with abrupt scenes of the artist visage, their face disorientatingly close to the camera, and autobiographical confessions. In later works such as 2006's Play Pause, Benning incorporates paper cutouts, drawing and painting, collaging digital and tactile media into one coherent narrative. Benning was a pioneer of the pixel vision film movement, which was a subgenre of experimental film originating in the early 90s. So the pixel vision format relied on the PXL um, 2000 camera, which was produced by P Fisher Price in the late um, 80s and early 90s. Um, it was an inexpensive standard camcorder marketed to children and produced dem densely textured monochrome compressed space visuals that mimic the cinematography of European auteur, I'm going to butcher this, Ingmar Bergman. Okay. Despite its commercial failure, it, it's the combined aesthetics and low price led to its status as a cult object among artists. Additionally, Pixel Vision's cult slash outsider status within the world of film allowed for the association to alternative subcultures and punk aesthetics, which ultimately led it, lent itself to Benning's work. Their explorations into youth and queerness and associations with the radical genre and feminism explicitly opposes cultural hegemony and relates directly to alternative subcultures and punk aesthetics. Within the context of the solitude and privacy provided by the handheld portability of the PXL 2000, Benning was able to create ephemeral, ephemeral and vulnerable media without needing to leave the space of their bedroom. The ability to shoot and edit film in private allowed for introspection. They created a space to explore their identity safe from violence and persecution. Around the time that they got the, P the Pixel Vision camera, they stopped attending high school and avoided being subjected to daily harassment. So the di thus, the diaristic format of the PXL 2000s mimics privacy and safety, capturing the solitude and affirming the identity of the teenage lesbian. All right, so now I just want to briefly talk about Benning's connection to third wave feminism and Riot Girl. Third wave feminism emerged at the end of the 80s and the beginning of the 90s, basically when Benning was first producing video work and exploring their identity both artistically and personally. Third wave feminism was shaped by postmodernism, which was, and it sought to reclaim, redefine, subvert, and question ideas, words, and media that have transmitted ideas about womanhood, gender, beauty, sexuality, femininity, masculinity, etc. It shifts to the gender continuum theory, which is basically the notion that gender isn't just male and female, it is a spectrum for infinite identification. In this movement, true sexual liberation became a process of awareness. How does society shape and influence one's sexual and gendered identity? Obviously, this resonated with Benning, as the solitude and privacy of Benning's work allowed for the exploration exp and expression of gender and sexuality for the sake of their own introspection, rather than as a form of performativity for the male gaze. 
Additional adoption and subversion of media slash sexist imagery, slang, and tropes are common signifiers of the movement. Sadie Benning was also a key player in the riot girl music scene, which was a feminist punk rock movement that focused on feminine liberation. They were close friends with the members of the band Bikini Kill, and later went on to form the music project La Tigre with the lead singer of Bikini Kill, Katherine Hanna. Additionally, Benning's 1992 short film, Girl Power, was soundtracked by Bikini Kill and featured clippings of riot girl scenes amidst punk rock imagery and archived photos of Benning's childhood. So Benning makes the personal connection of themselves through these childhood pictures to the music scene. Benning mirrors the confrontational aspect of third wave feminism through their brash vo voiceovers and close-up shots, spliced into their video sequences and completely at odds with the more dreamy visuals. There's, this juxtaposition is especially jarring when considered in the blunt audio, um, honesty of their audio narratives. So, Benning began creating work that exposed their own queerness in the midst of the AIDS epidemic, which was clearly a time of open hostility against the gay community. So the opposing forces of hostility as seen through the AIDS epidemic and liberation can be shown through Benning's journey to emancipation within their work as they age, as they become more comfortable with their identity. Um, they finally dare to venture outside of the bedroom to expose new imagery that deals with the liberation of the feminine. Sadie Benning's It Wasn't Love was recorded on a Fisher-Price camera their father had gifted them as a child. Sadie wanted to execute their idea of this piece with pixel vision as one of their inspirations. I believe that they were drawn to the fact that it was black and white and not very clear because it added some mysteriousness to the piece. Although the video was grainy and you could see each one of the pixels that created the image, the film told a great story with lots of detail making viewers feel as if they were watching a diary entry. Since the film was created to feel so personal, we as an audience feel like we are submerged into the story. It Wasn't Love was an autobiographical style film to show someone's affair with a stranger from an undisclosed person's point of view. Viewers are unsure of who the narrator is due to the fact that they have a very gender neutral voice and depending on the scene, it looks like a curly haired blonde woman or a male with facial hair. Taking into account Sadie's sexual orientation, it is reasonable to assume that the film was done from a woman's point of view since they are a lesbian. It is believed that this film is about an affair Sadie had with a woman who was a complete stranger to them. The film starts with a narrator sharing about last night and how a rebellious woman picked the narrator up and unsuccessfully drove to Hollywood because of a detour they made at a fried chicken restaurant to make out in the parking lot before driving said narrator home. The film ends with text across the screen saying, it wasn't love, but it was something. I believe that Sadie was trying to show how the struggles of having a homosexual relationship in the 1990s affected them and how they had to keep their hookup a secret because of the stigma associated with it. This Fisher-Price video created a unique and memorable way to show off and share Sadie Benning's thoughts with the world. Sadie Benning's has influenced the way life can be captured, especially through the lens of a queer person in the 90s. Within the piece, If Every Girl Had a Diary, Bennings creates an addition of their collection of films shot by pixel vision. In this piece, they create commentary on the way society is as they live their life as a queer person. Using their pixel vision toy camera, they capture their thoughts taken from their diary and which encapsulate the journey that they were going through with their identity. The way that they use the camera through zooming in and out creates a certain experience for the viewer that progresses the way we might perceive them and their experience. The content itself consists of various clips combined together from their cat to even just themselves speaking. A scene within the film, they, they speak about wanting to be out in public without being called slurs and looked at differently just for being a lesbian. They continue to speak about their thoughts regarding queerness throughout the film as the background noise of cars and outside noises overwhelms the, the viewer while Benning takes a pause consistently throughout the film. In addition, they continue to zoom throughout, peering into their diary and text written within, with, which spells the title of the film If Every Girl Had a Diary. The intention that is seen throughout the film overall projects them and their identity as they navigate the hardships of being a lesbian in the 90s. The idea of the collection of films conclusively create an experience for the viewer to better understand Bennings as a whole, but also learn about them and the realities that they had to go through. C.D. Benning is still an active artist with the timelessness of her work ringing true. Play Pause 2006 stays true to her lo-fi ways with differentiating itself as a split-screen animation instead of a single panel. 
It is displayed as an installation with both panels running side by side for viewing, accompanied by a soundtrack that includes the city noise that would be present within the scenes. This work was in collaboration with Solveig Nelson, where they depict a, a post 9 11 ambiguous city. The animation features figures and landscapes cut out of Benning's past drawings put together to narrate a world of characters going about their life. The drawings themselves are black and white with color, with color done in overlays and sound illuminating the scene. Elements of her early visual video journal work remain in the childish style of the visual documentation of these characters' lives. Her quirky and personal storytelling style has transcended time through her work. This work in particular is an example of how she uses experimental film to explore intimacy and identity, the figures of the narrative questioning their lives as they unfold on the screen. When considering the impact and importance of Sadie Benning, it's their creation of new imagery and unfiltered portrayal of their identity that I want to highlight. Seeing oneself depicted in media imagery affirms the importance of one's existence. Benning has gone on record to speak about the importance of inclusive imagery, citing one of the central reasons they began creating videos was to create new, diverse imagery. Benning has been cited as the conceptual parent to the selfie in the YouTube vlog. The diaristic format of their work precursed and directly influenced YouTube vlogs, with the notion of turning the camera onto oneself to expose deeper issues through introspective and solitude, and additional day-in-the-life narratives in the bedroom setting similarities. In regards to the selfie, artists have of course been creating self-portraits since the beginning, but where Benning stands out is through their use of the new media video format. The casualness of their self-depiction is reflected through casual posting on social media sites. It is of course never casual and always carefully catered to appeal to the audience, a tension that Benning repeatedly explores in their diaristic format. Their collaging of imagery mimics a personal Instagram feed, littered with a collection of media from archival childhood photos to pop culture imagery. Benning was hailed as a figure of new queer cinema, and has accumulated something of a cult following in independent gay film festivals. I think this is because of their I think this is because the unabashed exploration and depiction of their queer experience is central to their work, which they began producing during a period of rampant homophobia amidst the AIDS crisis. Despite how personal and private their work can be, Sadie Benning was able to create a space through their art that invited others to consider, explore, and express their own identity to create new diverse portraits in the contemporary age.